Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you all had a great weekend. Today we're gonna get started on our second grade project. Our second graders are working on a project called The Ripple Effect, A Study of Water. And today we're specifically, we're gonna talk about water pollution. What is water pollution? Let's see. Water pollution is the contamination. Contamination means when something is made dirty or hazardous, that means dangerous. Contamination of water bodies such as rivers, oceans, ponds, and lakes, very often by human activities. Sometimes, most of the time, the things that we as humans do to the environment, to Earth, <laughs> end up polluting or contaminating the water. And we've learned that water is extremely important. We cannot live without water. And we know that there isn't a lot of water that we are able to drink. And so when we talk about water pollution, we wanna learn how can we avoid it? How can we um, do something about it? Okay, and that's what we're gonna learn about today. Today our question that we're going to answer is, how can we do something about water pollution? Is there anything we can do? And we're gonna do an experiment to answer that question, okay? Now, in order to do an experiment, we're gonna use something called the scientific method. Take a moment to look at the steps. There are six steps in the scientific method. The scientific method is a strategy or a system that scientists use to answer questions using experiments. So the step, the first step in a scientific method is to ask a question. Today our question is gonna be, how can we clean polluted water the best? And I'll explain that more in a, in a bit. Our second step is to make a hypothesis. That means make a guess. What do we think the answer is going to be? The third step is to test the hypothesis with an experiment. We conduct an experiment to see if what we think is the answer really is the answer. And then we analyze the results. That's our data. Remember last week we talked about the data is the information we get from an experiment. Step five is to draw a conclusion. We answer our question and then we communicate our results. We let everyone know what we found. All right, so in order to learn, to learn the scientific method or to help us remember it, we are going to listen to a song and this is a rap song. And I want you to pay attention to the hook because the hook of the song is going to tell us the steps in the scientific method. Is everybody ready? Here we go. This is a Galileo, a Galileo, a.k.a. a double G, mamma mia. Live from the Tower of Pisa, grab a piece of pizza, the 17th century feature. is Galileo, Galilei, a scientist who questioned everything the church had to say. Like, well, how's about gravity? Do you think a heavy object will fall rapidly? Naturally, Galileo wanted to use experiments to obtain the truth. So if I drop these cannonballs at the same time, they'll fall at the same time. A river dance. And now he's holding two cannonballs dropped from the top, and both of them should land to fall. At the same moment, the one was heavier. Boom, proof gravity's constant. Get ready for a revolution. But the church wouldn't listen, and later he was locked up by the Inquisition. That's what can happen when you make a commitment. The scientific method to the madness. What is it? What is it? What is it? The scientific method starts out when you ask a question. The hypothesis is the second step that you test it. That's what an experiment is, of course. Analyzing the results is the fourth. Have we reached a conclusion? Do we need more support? That's the fifth step. Yep, we've been waiting. The sixth step. Take our results. Communicate them. Or shall we dig further? Ask good questions to be a good observer. In this case, it was weight. Does it influence the rate that an object falls? Well, we can prove it. Huh? By forming a hypothesis, an educated guess or what our thought process is. Um, if gravity is constant, then everything will fall at the same rate accomplished. 
a controlled experiment was conducted with only one factor that we adjusted. Bust it, it was the weight of the cannonball. That was the variable that we can control. Another type is a double blind test. Even the researchers don't know which is which. A controlled group of people is given a placebo. That's a fake pill that they take to see what we know. The scientific method starts out when you ask a question. The hypothesis is the second step, then you test it. That's what an experiment is, of course. Analyzing the results is the fourth. Have we reached a conclusion? Do we need more support? That's the fifth step. Yep, we've been waiting. The sixth step. Take our results, communicate them. The scientific method starts out when you ask a question. The hypothesis is the second step, then you test it. That's what an experiment is, of course. Analyzing the results is the fourth. Have we reached a conclusion? Do we need more support? That's the fifth step. Yep, we've been waiting. The sixth step. Take our results. Communicate them. All right, so we learned in that song that there have been people throughout history that have answered questions using the scientific method. So we want to come up with really good questions and answer them by designing an experiment. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. Is everybody ready? Here we go. So today our question, here's our steps. Our question is, which material will clean polluted water the best? Remember, polluted water means water that's dirty. It's been made dangerous. We cannot drink it. So we're going to try out three different materials, a sponge, a straw, and a spoon. And we're going to see which of these will clean the water the best. Okay, so next is our hypothesis. What do we think are, is going to happen? Now today you're my science sidekicks, so I need you to type in which of these, sponge, straw, or spoon, do you think will clean the water the best. So go ahead, type in your answer. I wanna see what you think. Sponge, straw, or spoon? And then we're gonna take the most. Let's see what your answers, what you think. Oh, okay, Kalia, hi Kalia. Kalia thinks the sponge. All right, so I'm gonna write that here. I think the sponge will clean the water the best. That's our hypothesis. That is our educated guess. So I want you to think about why do you think the sponge is going to clean the water the best? Maybe you're, you're going back to your prior knowledge, what you know about sponge. You know that sponges clean dishes and you know that you can use a sponge to clean a dirty floor or to clean a dirty wall. We use sponges to clean. So maybe that's why you think that sponge will clean water the best. So think about why, why your hypothesis. Okay, so now that we know our question, now that we know what we think the answer is going to be, now we're going to the third step, which is to create an experiment. Okay, so for today, the experiment that I've designed is um, these are the materials we're going to use. We're going to use three shallow containers. We're going to use lunch scraps and trash to put into the water. We're also going to do cooking oil mixed with food color. And then we're going to use our sponge, our straw, our spoon, and I'm going to wear gloves to make sure my hands don't get dirty. Okay, and here's our procedure. These are the steps in order to conduct the experiment. First, we're going to fill three containers with the same amount of water. These are my three containers. The containers are exactly the same size and they have the exact same amount of water. That's important in an experiment. This is called the control. We wanna keep these things the same. There's only one variable. The variable is the material we're going to use. Everything else will be exactly the same. Okay, that's our first step. Our second step, we're going to add pollution to each container. Okay, here comes the fun part. I'm going to put on my goggles. Kind of wet. Are you still with me? Who's excited to see what the answer to our question is? All right, I'm gonna wear my gloves because I'm about to touch some trash. Ew. 
But you know what's sad is that I'm sure a lot of you, when you go to a lake or you go to a pond or you go to the park and there's water, I bet you see trash in there, don't you? And it's really sad that people do that. They throw their trash into the water and then it's contaminated. And that's water that we drink. That's water that animals live in. So it's really bad to have water pollution. Okay, so I have three bags of trash that I collected. Each bag has the same things in it, the same amount. So I have an aluminum can, a Coke can, I have some egg shells, I have some tomato and rice left over, and I have like a carton of eggshells. That's what's in here. They each have the same thing. So I'm gonna add each one back to each container. So remember, again, this is our control. The control means that all of the other things in the experiment are exactly the same. Ew, there's our pollution. Okay, there's one. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed, I forgot to say this, we're in my backyard today. I decided to do this outside to make it more fun. It's nice to get some air. Okay, third one. I go with Coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's our pollution. And there's one more thing, because you know what? This happens a lot. Big corporations use machines that they drill. And a lot of times there's oil spills, um, spills of, of oil that go into the water. And this is one of the worst types of pollution. So I measured one and a third cup, and I'm gonna divide each, each bucket is going to get a third of a cup, okay? So they're gonna get the exact same amount. So let me make sure I'm looking at the measurements. Okay, there's a third. There's a third. And there's a third. And I'll have a third left. Okay, so I've added the exact same amount of pollution. I've added the exact same amount of oil. And I have the same amount of um, water. Okay? So remember, in an experiment, all of this is all called your control. It should all be the same. The only thing that's going to be different, our only variable, are going to be the materials that we're gonna to use to try to clean the water. Okay, so remember, we have three. We have a spoon, we have a straw, and we have a sponge. Now, our hypothesis is that the sponge is going to clean the water the best. Well, we're gonna find out by doing our experiment and answering the question. So we're gonna start off first with a spoon, okay? So that's our third step. Try each material one at a time, one material for each container. Then we're gonna compare to see which one has the cleanest water. Okay, and you know what I forgot to get is somewhere to put the dirty water, the pollution. Let me see. can to put my pollution in there. All right, here we go. Ready? Okay, here we go. The spoon. All right, so I'm just going to try to scoop out as much as I can. All right. The eggshell. The good thing about the spoon is that it's good. To, it's easy to scoop scoop with let's see if I can get the can oh you see how the water turned color it got so dirty that's pollution now think about it would you want to drink this water I don't know about me. 
but I would not want to drink this water. And that's the, that's the thing about pollution is that the water that we drink gets contaminated by human activity, by things that people do. Now it's getting really hard to get the rice. Let's see. see, I'm barely getting any. And you see the oil? It's gonna be really hard to get the oil out. I'm gonna keep trying. Let's see. Getting it, it's just taking some time. All right, so remember the step that I'm on right now, the scientific method is the experiment. I'm testing out which material will clean polluted water the best. It's getting, gets the little things of oil. The good thing about, well, it's not good when there's oil pollution, pollution in the water that's oil, but oil and water don't mix. So it makes it a little easier to clean. The bad thing that happens is that the oil stays there and it affects the animals that are in the water. And then it takes a long time to get clean. And by the time people come to clean the oil spill, there's already been a lot of animals that have been damaged. Okay, so I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. Because remember, I'm only using the spoon. I can't use anything else because that's my variable in the experiment is the spoon. And I hope you can see how hard it is to get the rice because it spreads. So I can't just get it all in one scoop. What do you think? You still want to drink this water? Thumbs up or thumbs down if you would drink this water. So the spoon um, was able to get the big things out really easily, right? It was able to get out all the big items like the Coke can and the eggshell. But with this little rice, it's gonna get kind of hard. Someone wants to drink it? Ew, who wants to drink this water? Fernando, are you sure? <laughs> All right, Fernando, so the next time I see you, I'll serve you this water in a water bottle. Got it? Okay, that's as good as this is gonna get. So I'm gonna leave my spoon. That's how well the spoon cleaned the polluted water. Okay, next. I don't know, what are you thinking? The straw, ooh. The straw is so tiny and it only has a very small opening, so I don't know. Okay, so here's my straw. This is a straw I'm gonna use to try to clean the polluted water. <laughs> this is gonna be really hard, okay. Okay, maybe I can get this one. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I was able to get this one. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can get the egg carton. Oh, got it. I'm getting it, it's just taking a little longer than the spoon, right? Ew, tomato. <laughs> it's kinda hard to get it. Hmm. Maybe if I, let's see if I can do this. If I can like suction it. Mm, nope, that doesn't work. 
All right, so are you already so we, in your mind getting a hypothesis as to the straw? We have a suggestion to put the straw in the hole of the can oh, to that's, get it out. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try it again. I'm going to curve it, so hopefully it can. So think about this. If you were at a lake and you were... You volunteered to clean the pollution. Think about if you would want to use a straw to do it. Okay, got it. All right, let's see if we can get the eggshell. Okay, I got one piece of it. Everybody wants to know where a sidekick, science sidekick is Jordan. He's asleep today. He did not want to wake up, Mr. Jordan. I had to call I had to call him at like five minutes before we started and he didn't want to wake up. Okay, now. Oh, I don't know how I'm gonna get the rest of this out. What do you guys think? Am I gonna be able to get the rice and the oil? There's a hair in there. I mean, maybe if I was gonna use my hand, I could get it. But remember, that's not what we're experimenting. We're experimenting the straw. We have a request for a shout out for Brian. Hi, Brian. He's locked Brian. up. Oh, poor Brian. Yes, he's on quarantine. Brian, we're sending you this water. Yeah. You know what? New he's in New York, and actually New York has the best... Sorry, Lindy. I've heard that New York has the best water, the, the, the city's water is the cleanest. And I have tasted New York water out of the tap, and it tastes really good. But my brother-in-law, Lindy works for the water department here in Dallas. And I know that the water here in Dallas is, is really good too, because they go through a lot of steps to make sure it's clean. Okay, I can't even get the tomato, guys. And I doubt I'm gonna get the rice or the oil. All right, so that's it for the straw. Who wants to drink this one? Okay, so if you look at the spoon one and the straw one, I don't know, the spoon one looks dirtier, but I think it's because it has more, like the oil is very spread out. And on this one, the oil is kind of stuck together. So maybe, you know what, what I think happened is when I was going with the spoon, it mixed, it mixed the oil and it spread more. And since I couldn't do that with the straw, the oil kind of stayed. Do you, do you see that? Do you see the oil floating at the top? You see how it's more it's more together, like there's bigger pieces of oil. And over here, it's kind of smaller. So it makes the water look dirtier. Do you agree? Do you agree or disagree? But this one has more trash in it. But that water looks dirtier. Okay, now to our hypothesis so those of you who are joining us we are conducting a science experiment using the scientific method we're talking about which material will clean polluted water the best and our hypothesis was that the sponge would clean the best all right so let's try out our hypothesis here we go Use my sponge. First, I'm going to try to get this. Okay, there's tomato. The egg carton. The eggshell. It's. I'm able to pick up more trash at a time. Do you notice that? Like I was able to get all the carton together. And look at how quickly, I've already gotten pretty much all the trash out. 
So, think in your mind, do you think our hypothesis is gonna be true? Oh, look at that. I was able to get a lot of rice at once. Water's looking. What are you noticing, guys? Think about what you're noticing in this water. I'm doing this in my backyard because this would make such a mess inside. So if you want to conduct this experiment later, all you need is some water and some trash and a sponge. All right, I do notice that I'm able to get more of the rice, which with the other two, it was very hard to get the rice. What do you guys think? Is it looking cleaner? It's cleaner, but do you still want to drink it? I don't know. That's the bad thing about water pollution is that even though we try to clean it, it's a lot of work to get it really clean and to get it to where we want to drink it. And that's what we need water for, for drinking, for plants to grow, which we need plants in order to have food. So we have a question, how do we clean out the oil? Yeah, that's a good question because it's really hard. Maybe, let me see if, if I put the sponge in, if it'll soak some of it up. You see how hard it is to clean the oil? I want you later, when you're on your computer, I want you to research oil spills oil spills in the United States, even if you just look up the United States, oil spills in the United States, and I want you to see what's happened with oil spills in the past and how it's affected animals and plants and people, it affects us too. Because would you wanna swim in this water? You'd come out feeling really greasy. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more of this.